Today is uh, Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday. And uh, I want to uh, minister, I want to start a series today called Beyond the Upper Room, How the Holy Spirit Can Change Your Life. We're going to look over this over the next few weeks together about how the Holy Spirit ministers, moves, touches our lives. How many know the Holy Spirit is a person? Yeah, man. And uh, He wants to change your life. He wants to change your life. So we're going to start this new series today. Uh, You know, when we hear the words Holy Spirit, it seems that we think about something mysterious uh, at times. Something uh, maybe controversial. Uh, There's probably nothing that's probably more controversial today in the church than... Uh, when you start mentioning Holy Spirit, you, you start getting all kinds of uh, uh, things that start coming to you, maybe for, to your people that you know. Listen, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ, and He's a person. We don't have to be afraid of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Who is this person? So who is He? What's He doing? Why is He so misunderstood? Who is this person that Jesus promised to send us in his place who is this person that transforms our lives who is this person that gives us supernatural power to bring answers to life difficulties who is this person that each of us can know intimately and personally I want to understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit more and more and more in my life We want to be open to the Spirit. Don't be closed off to the things of God. Amen. You know, God will touch you. He will minister to you if you just open yourself up. Don't just sit there like a knot on a log. Come on, during worship, you got to open yourself up. Don't sit there like a knot on a log. Amen. Just be open to the Holy Spirit and what He's wanting to do. And I'm telling you what, he'll rock your world. He'll change your life. Amen. Amen. You can say, man, Jesus is not real. You showed up way too late for that. Amen. You know, I found this quote. It says, the Holy Spirit turns theology into experience by drawing us into the life of God. You can have all kinds of theology. You can know all kinds of stuff about God. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul said the letter kills, but the Spirit, He gives life. He gives life. He turns theology into experiences. See, if, if you don't watch out, if I don't watch out, we'll turn every doctrine, uh, we'll turn our doctrine into basically academic exercises. We'll, we'll turn them into just religious routines and sterile church environments. I don't want a sterile church environment. You ought not either. You ought to get an amen on that one. Because there's nothing that happens in sterility. There's nothing that happens in a place that, 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 that there's no reproduction. Nothing, that, whenever you have sterility, things aren't li- there's no life in that. I don't want a sterile church environment. You may want that at a church. I don't know. There's plenty of churches around here. They could give it to you, I'm sure. I don't want that. We don't need another church experience. We need an experience with the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need an experience with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. He's the animating factor of the Trinity. I'm just introducing you today. He's the animate. If I can use this word, don't get offended. He makes the magic happen. You hear that at Disney World. This is where the magic happens. He makes it happen. I love what Ron R. Bonke said. He said, listen, the less Holy Spirit you have, the more cake and coffee we need to keep the church going. Now, I'm not against cake and coffee. <laughs> now, don't, I don't get offended over it, but that's the truth. See, we think we have to entertain. Listen, I can't entertain people. I'm not here to entertain people. I can't compete with 4D, 4K, I can't compete with any of that anyway. Right? I'm all for being.
being relevant, I'm all for advancing, I'm all for being progressive. But listen, I, listen, without the Holy Spirit, the church is a sterile environment. It's a meeting club. It's a place that people have pieces their conscience because they can say, you know what, I went to church today. But listen, I want a place that I'm changed by the power of God. That's what I'm looking for. I don't know about you, but that's what I'm looking for. That may not fill the seats up, but I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to be changed in that environment. Come on now. Woo! Come on, come on. Hallelujah. It's Pentecost Sunday. Life, spirit, ruach. The ruach in the Old Testament, the word spirit, the ruach in the Old Testament, the word ruach, it's the Hebrew word for spirit. It means wind, it means breath. In the New Testament, it's the word pneuma. Ruach and pneuma. Wind, spirit, life being released. What's his name? What's the Holy Spirit's name? Ruach. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, we are introduced to this Ruach. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth, was without form and void. The tohu va bohu, formless and void. And the Bible says the Spirit of God was hovering. The Spirit of God was hovering over the chaos, over the darkness. He was hovering. Let me tell you something today. God's not scared of your darkness, and he is not scared of your chaos. It sounds like my life before Jesus, but he came to me, and he brought me to Jesus. He wooed me. He brooded over me, and he's brooding over us today. That word hover in the King James, uh, he was hovering over the face of the water. It means that he was actually, it was a reproductive term. It was like an eagle that was sitting on the nest that was uh, covering the eggs, waiting for life. The Holy Spirit is a life giver. And when you and I get touched by the Spirit of God, life comes. I think it's interesting his name is Ruach or Numa. Breath. Isn't it interesting because but, but, uh, what, what's causing you to live today? Your breath. <sighs> he is our life. The very essence, listen to me now, I just, very essence of ev- everything in this world is speaking to you and I of who God is. That's why the Bible says the heavens are declaring who God is. You can look to the stars, and you know what? It will speak a language to you. Come on, you can look at Niagara Falls, and it will speak something to you. The very breath you're breathing today is a reminder. How about when you see a bird in the morning time? You ever saw a bird? You've been outside on your porch, and you've got birds flying. What's it a reminder of? It ought to remind you of the angels that are surrounding you. Everything is speaking to you and I. About who God is. In the very today, listen, in this room, 16% oxygen, air, you're breathing, not even thinking about it. You're breathing, not even thinking about it. You just think a second. Everybody just take a big deep breath in. Breathe out. It's a reminder to you. Life is in the Holy Spirit. He's breathing. You're breathing him in today. Isn't this awesome? This is the Holy Spirit. It's Pentecost Sunday. Amen. Go to Acts chapter 2. Praise God. I feel a preach on today. Can I get an amen? If I get some amens, you may just pull it out of me today. If you just just give me some amens, I may come out, maybe I may come right to you. Yeah, amen. Acts chapter 2, let's start here in verse 1. 
It says this, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place and what? Suddenly. Everybody say suddenly. Suddenly. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues, cloven tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speaking in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, look, at, look, are not all these who speak Galileans? How is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Ilium, Elamites and those who dwell in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans, and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues. The wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what's the next word they say? What could this mean? Others mocking said they are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice, said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose. It didn't say they weren't drunk. It didn't say they weren't drunk. It says you just don't think, they're just not drunk like you think they're drunk. <laughs> Since it's only the third hour of the day, which means 9 a.m. But this is what was spoken by prophet Joel, by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my maidservants and on my men servants and on my maidservants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I want you to understand something today. The gospel does not culminate 50 days prior to this. The gospel does not culminate with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. The gospel culminates with the ascension of Christ and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. See, it's at Calvary, it's at, it's at the Nativity, and it's at Calvary that God identifies with us. But it's at Pentecost that you and I are empowered to identify with Him. Pentecost, Pentecost means 50, 50 days after the resurrection. And God made a promise. He said, I'm going to send the Spirit of God. It's going to be poured out on you. It's going to be poured out upon all flesh. We say, Pastor, the Holy Spirit's always been here. Yes, He has been. Look through the Old Testament. But He would only come on certain people. The prophet, the priest, the king. He would anoint people in the Old Testament for acts of service. But what was different about Pentecost? It was universal. It was universal. The Spirit of God is now available to Jew, Gentile. Male, female. Bond, free. No matter social class, Spirit of God is available now. No matter gender class, Spirit of God's available now. Amen. No matter what nationality, Spirit of God's available now. It was universal. But not was it, not was it only universal, it was also permanent. It was also permanent. The Holy Spirit is God's, it, it, he, he is God. He's not a lesser form of God. He is God. 
And he is the representative of the Godhead now on the earth. He's the one that's active on the earth. Pentecost, 50 days. If you notice what he said here, in the last days. Everybody say last days. Notice, it, notice it's plural. This means Pentecost is a continual celebration. The last day started then. We are in the last days, but it's been the last days. Because the last days started with Pentecost. Come on, somebody. So what's it saying? I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh in the last days. That means Pentecost is a continual celebration. We're not going back 2,000 years and, and camping out on an upper room. If you notice, the disciples never went back to the upper room. They were in the upper room once and then they left the upper room. They never went back to it. Boy, isn't that what we want to do? We always want to go back to a, a past experience. Stay with me now. The last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit. Pentecost is a celebration. The power of Pentecost is to be experienced now in this age. The effects of the work of the Spirit of God continuing today. I think it's interesting. Many people say, what are you? Well, I don't know. I'm a crazy mixed up kid. What are you guys? What kind of church you have there? Well, I don't know. A, a Christian church. I know where they're going. But you know, you say, well, I'm Pentecostal. What does that mean? Pentecostal is not about a denomination. Pentecostal is about an experience. We're 50 years. We're 50 years. That's what Pentecost means, right? So Pentecostal will be where we're 50 years uh, people. But this is the deal, is that we, we kind of hem in all these different terminology, trying to hem people in different doctrines and this, that, and the other. But the Holy Spirit's available to Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, uh, whatever, Catholic, non-denominational. I mean, Tommy, if Tommy was in here, Tommy Early, his mom was Catholic and was spirit-filled. This is, this is available for everybody. No matter what you put across the name of your door, your church, this is not about a denomination. It's about the Spirit of God empowering you. Amen. Well, they say, you know what? Do you speak in tongues? Oh, yeah, all the time. I'm guilty. I pray more in tongues. I do. Half of my prayer life, half of my prayer life, and be praying when I pray in spiritual language. And it's wonderful. Not something to be avoided. Not something to be avoided. Amen. They were in an upper room. They were waiting, weren't they? What were they waiting for? They were waiting for the promise that Jesus told them. You believe any guy that got up out of a grave too, would you not? <laughs> he got up. Would you say, yes, sir, whatever you want. And, and they went, and they went to an upper room to wait for the promise of the Father. Because Jesus told them to go tarry in the city of Jerusalem until this Holy Spirit comes. Man, don't look at me like I'm, I'm not, you guys understand, this is the Holy Spirit. He's in you. He's living in you. If you're born again, he is living in you today. Jesus, by his spirit, is living on the inside of you. Now let's find out a little bit about this Holy Spirit. Go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, and we're going to skip around here. John chapter 14, upper room teachings. Jesus uh, <clears throat> hours, some say even as, as, as soon as maybe 12 hours, 10 hours, 8 hours before all this went down with his crucifixion, uh, that he was in an upper room teaching his disciples. And don't you know the last words of somebody are pretty important. Listen, if you're, if, if you're saying to somebody, listen, somebody's on their deathbed and they're coming to you and you say, I need them to come and talk. Talk to me. I, I need them to come over to my house. I need to talk to them about something. 
listen, they're not bringing up old times 25 years ago. They're telling you some important things that they want you to know right then and right there. So Jesus' upper room teachings are very important. John chapter 14, let's look here in verse 16. It says, I will pray the Father. I will ask the Father. And he will give you what? Another what? Helper. Hmm. King James terminology, comforter. I'm going to send you another comforter. The word another here is the Greek word alos, A-L-L-O-S. And it means one of the same kind. I'm going to send one just like me. Just like I comforted you, this Holy Spirit I'm going to send is going to comfort you. Just like I comforted you, he's going to comfort you. Just like I helped you, he's going to help you. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you. What? Come on, with the Spirit of God, just look at the Scripture. He's going to abide with you. What? Forever. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be where? He said, I'm going to send this Spirit of God, the Spirit of God, and He's going to come in. He's just not going to dwell with you. He's going to actually come into your life. He's going to enter into you. <laughs> Woo! Praise God. Look, let's just read some more. Look at verse 26. Again, five times the word comforter, parakletos. This word is mentioned, and four of them is mentioned in John's gospel here in verse 26. But the helper... The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Praise God. Amen. Chapter 15, verse 26. But when the helper comes, hmm, again, he's telling you he's going to be a helper. He's going to be a comforter. Holy Spirit's going to be the one that's going to come and help you. He said, when the helper comes, When did he come? He came on the day of Pentecost. Whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. Isn't that good? Just let the Scripture speak today. The 16th chapter of the book of John. Let's start in verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Can you believe that? You ever had your mom tell you that? I'm telling you the truth. Mom, right, mommy? Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Isn't that something that Jesus had to say? I tell you the truth. <laughs> I tell you the truth. It is to your what? You got to get this one. It is to your advantage that I go away. Who wouldn't want Jesus to be here forever? Who would, who would have, if you were there with him, would you want him to leave? But he's telling you, listen, it's to your advantage that I go away. It is to your advantage that I leave. It is to your advantage. I'm going to put you to an advantage. For if I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, will not what? Come to you. But if I depart, I will what? Those are powerful words. Jesus said it. He said, I'm going to send the promise to you. And it's going to be one just like me. He said, it's better that I leave. Because, listen, I can only be right here, right now, at this place. He said, but when the Holy Spirit comes, I'm going to get in to everybody. And we're going to become a force upon this earth. (laughs) He said, we're going to start a revolution. Come on, somebody. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. He's not some enigmatic uh, force. He's a person. And you and I can have relationship. There's a few things I want to talk to you about today there's 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 this promise from the father 
This promise from the Father. What does it mean for me, for me and you? It means this, an experience with a person. It's an experience with a person. What's the big idea today? Why are we celebrating Pentecost? Because the Holy Spirit is the reason we have relationship with Jesus. The Holy Spirit is not just a religion. It's not a religion. It's Jesus. It's him. It's, it's who he is. And he's there. You didn't even get saved. You know how you got saved? The Holy Spirit put a hook in your mouth and started drawing you. You know, you know, I'm talking about that burden you got in your heart you walk around with. If you're here and don't know Jesus today, and you're walking around trying to do your own thing, doing your own will, living your own way, but the Holy Spirit's not scared that he's hovering over you. See, David said, if I make my bed in hell, you're with me. He said, I can't go away from your presence. People do it all the time. They run away from God. But guess what? Holy Spirit is hovering. Ruach, breathing. Even in your mess ups and failures, he's brooding. Come on, somebody. It's an experience. This promise is an experience with a person. It's an experience with a person. Amen. Notice, if you notice back here, let, just, just look here back here at, at chapter 14, verse 16 and 17 again. Just, just look. We could walk through these again, but I want to show you this. Look, it's, I will pray the Father and what? What's the next word? He. Not it. But what? Who? He. Will give you another helper that what? May abide with you forever. Verse 17. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither knows him or sees him nor knows him. But you know what? Him, him. For dwells and will be in you. You see that personal pronouns? The Holy Spirit's not an it. It's a person. And he's waiting for this personal experience with you. Amen. Man, you could be in the shower. Man, how many times the Holy Ghost has come on me in a shower? Bathtub revelations. <laughs> Andy gets mad at me. She didn't get mad at me. Well, maybe a little bit. <laughs> Why are you in there so long? Oh, don't worry. I got a book. <laughs> Add some more hot water. That's getting cold. You know what I'm talking about. I'm telling you what, man. It was just like yesterday. I, I, was, I was out just doing something. I can't remember what I was doing. But the Holy Spirit came in and said, I need you to pray about that. And I just started praying about it. It wasn't something that it was, that, that it was some kind of, you know, uh, it was just, all right, Father, I just I pray for that situation. I thank you right now that you're working in this situation. It was 15 seconds. Moved right on. Because why? I want to learn how to cultivate a personal exp a relationship with the Holy Spirit. He's God. One times one times one is what? That's the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. One times one times one equals one. I can't sit here and explain to you the doctrine of the Trinity. We know it's a revealed doctrine. But we know that God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He is one God. Not tri he's, he's not a, we're not talking about polytheism. We're talking about a, a one God that's expressed in three different persons. Just like you. You're one person, but you have three parts in you. Come on, Bible school student. You are what? They got it. <laughs> They took the test. They passed the test. But more than that, you know it now. People ask me about the school. You know, why do you test them? Because if I don't test you, you won't remember anything. And you probably won't look at your notes ever again. It's just true. But they had to take those tests. But just like man is spirit, soul, and body, we're made in the image of God. So is God. He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's a personal experience. If you don't see, listen, you say, well, if you don't see the Holy Spirit as a person, you won't develop a personal relationship with Him. If you don't see Him as a person, you won't develop a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. If you see Him as an it, some kind of force, and you don't see Him as a person, you won't develop that relationship with Him. He wants to talk with you. Everybody in this room hears God, and we don't even know it. You hear God, you just don't know it yet. Some of you just don't know it yet. How did you come to know God? How did you even come to get saved? You had to hear the Holy Spirit. He's speaking. He's real. Man, I tell you right there this morning as I was worshiping, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Told me something personal. I'm not sharing it with you. But he told me something today. Right there. Right there he told me something. It was for me. He's a person. So this promise is about an experience with a person. This promise is an experience with the paraclete, the comforter, the helper. The Greek word is parakletos, or the, the English translation is the paraclete. This is what this word means, helper, parakletos, the paraclete. It means comforter, standby, advocate, counselor, intercessor. You're a personal assistant. Your coach, your trainer, one that's called alongside of you to help you. Para Kletos, one called alongside to aid you, one called alongside to you to, to, uh, to uh, alongside to you to help you. He's your personal Siri. We'll talk to our phone before we ever talk to the Holy Spirit. That's a good word right there. What's the Holy Spirit saying about it? Right? An intimate friend, a personal advisor, a special consultant, a private assistant. Think about a coach. Think about a coach. He's a coach. He doesn't do it for you. A coach doesn't, a good coach is not doing anything for you. Matter of fact, he's pushing you. To become the player that he already sees that you are. You know how the Holy Spirit... Now, this is good. Let me just go here a minute. You know how the Holy Spirit comes and starts convicting you? Conviction is not a bad thing. Conviction and condemnation are two different things. Condemnation always drives you, tells you how, how unworthy you are and how you're not fit to be used. But the Holy Spirit will convict you or tell you something. Listen, this is not who you are. You ever had the Holy Spirit start getting on your case because of something you're doing? Now, I'll come back next week. I know that you may, may not if you have to raise your hand. <laughs> you ever been there before? I've been there before. What about you, Russ? Oh, yeah. Huh? Been there. But you know what? You know why he's doing that? Because he sees potential in you. And he doesn't want to see sin destroy your life. Sin destroys you. So why does God hate sin? Because it destroys you. And he is, he is recklessly in love with you. Because he, want, he doesn't want anything destroying your life. Respond to the Holy Spirit. He's a coach. He's there to help you. He's there to lead you into something greater. You may hate your coach at times. Come on. Holy Spirit are getting on you. Why are you doing that to me, God? You don't do it to them. Well, quit worrying about them. He's got something for you. Right? Listen, a coach is not paying any attention to anybody that's not, not, listen, if you've got somebody that's just barely getting along, that coach is not going to be very hard on that person. But I'm telling you, it's that person, right, Billy? It's that person that has potential. It's that person that they see something in that person. Listen, I'm going to push you. You want to run another, you want another, run another sprint. You want to do this a little bit. You're going to stay here a little extra after practice. He's a coach. He's there to help you. This is this paraclete. 
This one that's called alongside, he encourages you. He corrects you. But ultimately, you're the one that has to respond. How many of you need help today? I'll be the first to raise my hand. I need a helper. How about you? I'm talking about beyond the upper room today. See, listen, I'm not talking about a Pentecost that we're celebrating looking back 2,000 years. I'm talking about celebrating about a Pentecost that's now available. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Spirit that comes in and helps us. That helps us to be able to be who God has called us to be. That's what we're celebrating today on this Pentecost Sunday. The coming of the Holy Spirit that will transform our lives. It will transform our world. You guys, uh, I mean, I'm sure, I mean, I mean, I don't follow the royal stuff that goes on, but there was a wedding, I guess, yesterday. I, that's what I hear. But I've heard more. Don't, don't sit there. And I, you, you know, everybody's on Facebook. <laughs> but I would encourage you to go look up that Episcopal priest that preached for 15 minutes at that wedding. I would encourage you. Take 15 minutes up and listen to what he got to say. That guy was on fire. He was in the, he was in the, I don't know, the church, whatever that church is over there. But he was leaning, he looked like a Pentecostal preacher, I'm telling you. He was like, he looked like me. He was leaning across the lectern like this. And he was coming back and walking over like this. And he, they didn't know what to do with him. <laughs> you ought to watch him. Print the prince, the, the, the queen. And... I'm serious. Go watch it. They're like looking across at people. And the bride, she was eating it up because that was her pastor, I guess. She just loved it. And then uh, whatever his name was, he said something like, at the end of it, he said something. I don't know what he said, but I was like, it's pretty good. I mean, you know. It was on fire. But listen, the Holy Spirit, he said, talking about how love changes the world. And the Holy Spirit changes the world. I'm talking about the helper today. He's interested in helping you. He's interesting to change the world through you. He wants to be your paraclete. He wants to be your comforter. He wants to be your personal aid and your personal assistant. How about on that business deal? Are you seeking Holy Spirit? How about on your marriage? Are you seeking Holy Spirit? Come on now. I know how to raise your kids. Are, are, are we seeking Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit knows how to be a good husband. He knows how to be a good daddy. He knows how to be a good employee. All we got to do is just listen to Holy Spirit. And he will lead us in the paths of righteousness. Woo! Come on now. I'm talking about a personal experience with the, with the person of the, 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 the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Ghost, the representative of God upon the earth, and also his help, his parakletos, his, his call alongside. He has a calling. Everybody say he has a calling. He has a calling. And he's faithful. He's your divine help desk. Through all your habits and your hang-ups, He's called to help you. Your problems don't scare him. But he's committed to walk you through the process. He's called the spirit of grace for a reason. He wants to walk you through your issues. That's why you can never look down your nose at somebody else's walk. Because you never know how Holy Spirit is directing them into their destiny. Come on now. Three things. A person. He's a person. He's a paraclete. And then he positions you for an advantage. An advantage. It is to your advantage that I go away. So I want to give you an advantage. Real quick. When the day of Pentecost came in Acts chapter 2. There was three things that was evident. There was three manifestations that happened on the day of Pentecost. There was a mighty rushing wind. There was tongues of fire. 
And then there was the manifestation of supernatural language. Three things. Three things, man. I mean, this is where we're going to go over the next week, so you don't want to miss it. The wind. Three manifestations on the inauguration of the Holy Ghost coming to the earth. What was it? The wind. The wind. The wind. It's a type of the residence of the Spirit of God in you. You can read it later, but John chapter 3 says, Unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Put up verse uh, 8. Look at this. Look what's this. The wind blows... Where it what? You can't tie down the Holy Ghost. You ever try to catch wind? Not break wind. <laughs> catch wind. I shouldn't have said that. That wasn't good. Oh my. We're going to ax that off of the. T- <laughs> I am embarrassed now. I can't believe I said that. Okay, that just came out. What, where is that? <laughs> well, we're family. Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right, we got to reel this in. <laughs> We've I've lost it. Barry and I, Pastor Barry and I, talk about man. You can't watch out. You can't. Sometimes you can't reel things back in after that. I got too much important stuff to say here, real quick. All right, it says the wind blows where it wishes. You can't tame the Holy Spirit. That's what's going on is people are trying to put God in a box. We're trying to, we don't want that. And we, we'll take a little bit of this, but not all of that. How can we say that, church? Because we're afraid of offending people. Listen, the early church relied on the Holy Spirit. I can get crazy, I get that. It can get crazy. It can get really, it can get, people can get flaky, people can get stupid. But when there's a genuine move of the Spirit of God, things just start flowing and happening. And people's lives get changed. It says the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is what? Born of the Spirit. If you've been born again, you've been born of the Spirit. The wind, the wind that came on the day of Pentecost is a type of the Spirit of God taking up residence on the inside of you. Why? Because, you listen, wind, breath, it, it, it brings up uh, stuff like Genesis 2. God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Adam came alive with the breath of God. It reminds me of like Psalms where it says that, that God, he's a star. I think it's Psalms 33. It says he's a star. He breathes and stars are created. It's a star breathing God. Creation, creative, something happens with, when, when God breathes. Amen. You and I become a temple of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, real quick on here, on verse uh, 19 and 20. Look what it says here. Do you not know that your body is the what? Temple of the Holy Spirit. Who where, who's where? Where's he at? If you're born again, God is where? You are mobile homes for the Holy Ghost. God lives in mobile homes. You are the temple. To the Jews, the temple was the place where heaven and earth met. When they talked about the temple in the Old Testament, it was the place that God met man. It was the place that heaven and earth met. 
He said, you become the place that heaven and earth meet. He's in you. Who is in you, whom you have from God and you are not your own. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes and does a bang-up job. He loves it. He comes into your life and starts having a temple tantrum. You remember that temple tantrum that Jesus had? Walked into a temple, started turning over money changers, tables, started taking stuff. Why? Because it, it was robbing people of an experience with God. He comes into your life. Come on now. You get born again. He comes into your life. He starts turning tables over. He likes to rearrange some furniture. Titus chapter 3, real quick on the screen. The Message Bible, look what it says. It wasn't so long ago that we ourselves were stupid and stubborn. Anybody else been here? Dupes of sin. Ordered every which way by our glands. Going around with a chip on our shoulder. Hated and hating back. Let's go here. But, aren't you glad with the buts? But when God, our kind and loving Savior God, what did he do? Woo, aren't you glad when Jesus stepped in? Said he stepped in and he saved us from all of that. It was all his doing. We had nothing to do with it. He gave us a good bath and we came out of it. New people washed inside and out by who? Man, I'm telling you what, when the wind comes in your life, it comes into your life and starts to clean you up. Gives you a bath, cleans you up. He puts himself inside of your body. It said when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, there was wind. The second thing, there was fire. Fire is a type of the sanctifying work of the Spirit of God in your life. Listen, the Holy Spirit is not, listen, he is relentless in his pursuit of you and to make you like Jesus. He wants to make you like Jesus. What's his job to create? Listen, he wants you to be just like Jesus. So he comes and starts dealing with your heart. He comes and starts dealing with your life. He says, listen, this is not who you are, son. This is not who you are, my, my daughter. This is not who you are. I'm calling you out of that mess. Come on out of that stuff. You don't need around that. You don't need that stuff. I, want to, I, want, I got something better for you. He comes as wind, and then he comes as fire. Amen. Transforming you. Transforming you. Don't you know something? That Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is a gardener. Quit seeing him as a judge. And start seeing him as a physician. Start seeing him as a gardener. When he got up out of the grave, Pastor Barry, you remember that? Mary was there at the tomb, and she thought he was the what? Isn't that interesting? He thought, she thought he was the gardener. I don't know what he looked like, but maybe he had a, a spade in one hand. Maybe he had a pair of gloves, because Jesus is the gardener of the new creation. And when he steps into your life, he comes to do some work. He's going to start weeding stuff out, because he knows and sees the potential of your soil. And he's there to bring out. Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branch. He that abides in me will bear what? Fruit. God wants you to bear fruit. So he sends you the Holy Spirit. He comes inside of you like wind. And all of a sudden he starts, he starts, uh, he starts coming to you as fire. He starts transforming you. and starts sanctifying you by the fire of his presence. That's what happens. I remember one time, I think I've told this story before. i got to hurry. There was a, over here, Andy's Pawpaw uh, owned all the property right across the, uh, the river here, across the bridge. And... Uh, one year, uh, I don't know if it was, an, was it an accident, that, that thing? Yeah, there was an accident. He, he actually, he set the whole uh, hillside on fire over there. And when he done that, the next year, the grass was greener, was, more, uh, was, was much more uh, thick. It was beautiful where he had set that fire. <laughs> See, that's what the Holy Spirit, it looked like, it, it looked like a mess when it happened. But listen, it, it sometimes looks like a mess when he starts coming in and starts working in your life. But if you just keep at it and let him continue to, to sanctify you with his fire, I'm telling you what, in a year from now, you look back at your life, you just say, you know what, I was better off for it because I 
open myself up to the Holy Spirit to deal with my, my life. Yeah, I had to cut off that person. It doesn't mean they were bad, but I had to cut them off. They weren't good for me. Yeah, I had to quit going that place. Well, because it wasn't good for me. It doesn't mean that I can't minister to people. It doesn't mean that I might not go back into the situation and rescue some people out. But God all of a sudden starts saying, that's not what you need right now. And you don't need this right now. He's coming to do a work in you because he's trying to produce something that's greater that's going to bear fruit in your life. Comes as wind. He comes as fire. And then there was the supernatural manifestation of speaking in tongues. Now, I don't have time to go into that. We will go into that in this series. But what I want you to see, that's a type of the Holy Spirit using you and flowing through you to touch somebody else. There's the work in you of the wind coming in your life, the transformation of your life, and then God using you to minister to somebody else. Now, let me give you this prerequisite. It doesn't mean you have to have it all cleaned up in order for God to use you. Listen, if he can use a donkey, he can use anybody in this room. All I need to do is be open. How about a miracle? How about a sign? How about you? The Holy Spirit wants to work in your life and through your life. This is what it is. He comes as wind. He comes as fire. And there's a supernatural manifestation that happens. The Holy Spirit wants to use you to affect someone's life. You are the hands and the feet of Jesus. You are the mouth of Jesus. Listen, if you don't speak, it's not going to get spoken. If you don't pray, it's not going to get prayed. If you don't extend your hand to lay hands on someone, it's not going to happen. He's going to flow through the church. He's going to flow through you and I. This is the way way the Holy Spirit works. This is beyond the upper room where it becomes real to you and I every single day living in the experience of Pentecost every single day. Amen. We're going to get ready to close. I need you guys to go back and get uh, the, the youth for me, uh, Andrew. I'll get the youth for me real quick. Romans chapter 15. Verse 19 up on the screen. Look at this. I'm done. Close my Bible. That don't mean anything. Even, if my, as if, even as my preaching has been accompanying with the power of signs and wonders. And all of it by the what? How did the signs and wonders come? Through the Holy Spirit. Where's the Holy Spirit live at? So Jesus couldn't be here today. So guess what? He sent me. I used to walk in, C-A-M-C. I'd walk into the surgery suite. Well, Jesus couldn't be here today. But I volunteered. And he's living in me. But nobody's dying today in this surgery. This happened. Somebody's not dying in this. Nobody's dying in this. Someone start complaining. No, we ain't doing that today. We're going to have a good day in here. And nobody's dying in this room. I had surgeons look at me and say, you need to start praying right now. This person's going to die. So they're not going to die. We'll pray. So that was what was a good thing about having a mask on. <laughs> I'd be back there praying in spiritual language. And they didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Behind the mask. Who is that mask man? <laughs> I am that man. I am that man. <laughs> Truth or not? Donnie, he's going to show up tomorrow on a backhoe or a bulldozer. Because guess what? You're going to be there. And you never know tomorrow what's going to happen. Come on now. He's coming back from a, one time coming back from Ward Harvest Church, Andy and I with a bunch of kids. Real late in the night, remember that? Over on Route 7, coming up from Columbus, back up this way. and Come up on first car up on a terrible accident. And that boy was hanging out. with the, I'll never forget it. I'm going to tell you one thing. We all sprung into action. I had teenagers all around me. And we were praying and speaking life into that boy. Ain't nobody cared. 
Well, did you hear them speaking in tongues? Nobody cared about that. They didn't care at all. That's a bunch of religion that cares about that kind of stuff. Ain't nobody caring about that. Because there's life and death. It's, it's hanging in the balance. I just need to get somebody that can get a hold of God. Come on. I'm talking about people in this room. If you're born again, you can get a hold of God. He's not in the, he's not, he lives in you. And life and death are in the power of your tongue. And you breathing out words, the ruach of God. Things begin to change. Stuff starts happening. Things and life begins to be imparted into situation. I'm talking about you're greater than what you ever, ever could ever imagine. I'm telling you, God sees more in you than you could ever. I'm telling you, he believes in us. He believes that he's put himself into us. And he believes in us, church. It's the power of Pentecost. It's the power. Come on. The wind, the fire, and the supernatural power of God moving in and through your life. Isn't that good? Come on now. Come on. Give the Lord a good hand of praise. So we're going to get into this stuff over the next three or four weeks, okay? So don't miss this. Uh, I'm going to talk about the power of God changing you. How's, how does transformation happen in your life? I'm talking about he come to bring change. I'm going to show you that. We're going to talk about, man, the power of the Holy Spirit coming up on you. We'll talk about spiritual language. You say, man, I never heard anybody teach on that. Just come, I'll teach you. Amen. God wants to change your life. The Holy Spirit wants to change your life. How many believe that today? How many believe that today? Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God.